You're watching Hegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Hello, welcome to another episode of My Wheelhouse, a quirky sports show discussing basketball topics of past, present, and future. As always, I'm your host, Seamus. I'm joined by some familiar faces. Uh, after a week of absence, Mike is back. Welcome back. How are you doing? Things are good. Things are always, well, I always say that, so well, that's mm. true. It's great, too. Good to good have to you be back. Here. Yes, I agree. Uh, <coughs> back again, uh, journeyman already. Logan, how are you doing? Back again. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Is this your third in a row? No, third total. Third yeah. total. Okay. Back, back. I got Italian. back. back. Yeah, and uh, first ever arrival, Ray. Uh, welcome to the show. My Thank you very Ray, much. Ray very Paul. honored to be here. Uh, so we, Thank you. we fit it in at a perfect window. Ray is traveling to Abu Dhabi for a pretty long period of time on wow, Thursday. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The complete other side of the earth. I'll Who's be watching. Team in Abu Dhabi. Wow. I don't Crazy know. Questions. I'll be watching the Celtics at 5:30 a.m. I have a falafel, egg, and cheese. That works a little bit. <laughs> falafel, egg, yeah. and cheese. My it's daughter's in the UK, and she can't, it's worse for her because they don't start till the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be a very <laughs> peculiar breakdown. Um, so today we're going to do a little bit of everything. I think we're going to play some cards. Mike hasn't played cards yet. We're going to play that later in the day. Um, we're going to do some hats as well. I got some new hats to check out. But of course, we got the wheel as always. So uh, let's get after it. Ray, first spin. Let's see what you got. Go get it, Ben. That's the wrong name. Ray. What you got? <laughs> okay, the Blazers. All right, so I just, I just wanted to talk about this Blazers team because before last week they were pretty strapped up with, I think, the second highest payroll in the league. They recently fleeced the Nets, moving Alan Crabb, who the Nets clearly wanted. They offered him the max contract that the Blazers were paying him last year. Um, so they moved them. He got Andrew, Rick, Andrew Nicholson in return, which they stretched, allowing them to have some cap space. They're going to be below the tax uh, cap. Um, I'm just curious what you think that the Blazers are going to do. Obviously, Mello has been a target of theirs. Uh, they, they, they're really pretty open in terms of where they're going to be seeding. Uh, I, I, I see them as a team that's going to improve. I'm, I'm curious what you think about what, what, their, well, what their moves Well, you would really be. hope they would improve because they are the biggest disaster last year. It was very I sad. mean, the, after uh, Lillard came out as a star, you would hope, uh, was it two years ago, three years ago, he yep. like emerged as yep. an elite player. And then last year it was just super disappointing. And you had McCollum come out and be a he better, was, well, stronger player. Well, who's the player. center? Who's the center? Because they played much better the Juice, last 15 Juice to Nurkis, 18 Juice games of the season. Mm -hmm. They played much better with him. No, he's and they're banking on him as because Lillard and McCollum aren't good defenders. No, often. That um, uh, you really need that guy in the middle. And that um, uh, they're banking on him showing up the defense. I don't see it. I think they're stuck in the mud. I think they're still going with um, uh, McCollum and Lillard for virtually all their points. And when you put the guys like Hockness and somebody else in the, in the um, um, yeah. well, they, yeah. I, I just don't the, see where the points are going to come from other than them. And I don't see enough defense coming from him in the middle to really change that team. I, I, I don't see – and Zach Collins is a disappointment. I was hoping he was going to be yeah, a, really a big-time player. Uh, and I mean, we, a, you don't know yet. You don't know yet. He still could be fine. He's well, some league, you saw him enough. He's just not ready physically to play in what the NBA. Your, uh, so I don't, I don't see them as a good team. What's your insight on the Blazers? I absolutely agree. I think their team – Defense was horrendous last year. They were, what, 25th in the league in points per game. Um, I don't think Carmelo is uh, the missing piece they need right now. I think he'd be great for a year, uh, maybe two, bring some, bring some fans to the stadium. But Carmelo is not the missing piece for anybody. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. That's not what they're talking about. They're not thinking that, okay, even though Dame did tweet, but like, if we get Melo, we're going to watch out, Warriors. Yeah. But that, that, that's not the goal. They, they just want to be able to compete more. And you, you want to be a top seed in the playoffs because you want to create more revenue through more home games, and you just want to – raise excitement. If you're not the Warriors or the Cavaliers or whatever team is playing alongside LeBron James, you're not thinking about championships right now. You're thinking about how can we get as much money in, how can we heighten fan interest as much as possible, and I think Melo is a perfect player for that for the Blazers. No. Yes, he is. The, the, the Blazers' offense is dynamite but after those two guys, if one of them gets hurt, it's so one-sided. No one else can score. There's no three-point shooters on that team besides the two of them. I think he helps them a lot. I don't think he makes them a top three I go team, a long way back with the Trailblazers. I would, I would make them a five. I go back to when they were, if we ever have a discussion yep. of the best team of all time, I'm there. The hundred games that that Portland Trailblazers have played, that, that they played to a world, a world championship, is Potentially, it's top five with me, and oh. I'll have the discussion with you. Yep. And their fans were incredible. Oh, they have great and, I fans. I mean, they, they, they had Toronto sold out in the parking lot way before that. They had movie theaters that were sold out with the fans. 
I think that keeps going forward. I think they have a good fan base, and I think they're going to see so right too. through Carmelo, and they're not going to. That's well, not that's, the answer that's, at that's all. That's another thing that I was thinking that beyond He's Carmelo, if he came there, it would be a buy low purchase where you would be okay. We're just trying to optimize our season next season. I bet you he wouldn't be signing there for an extension. So they would be moving just like minimal contracts, maybe a couple picks that they're just throwing, hoping it'll stick at the wall with a uh, new management in, the, in New York. And they're just going to bring him in. He'll probably leave next year. And then when he does, they'll have open slots for one of the best free agency classes in the past five or six years. I, I think that I they just can make don't some get it with Carmelo. I don't get all you guys that see something of value there in Carmelo Anthony. I just think that you have to respect him as one of the top I don't 20 think scorers all time. He's an offensive. He's a superstar offensively. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's and we haven't seen him with pieces around him. He's, he's an really an aging haven't. superstar yeah. who's getting older every day. Yes, he is. But Everyone have, is. Have we, the only time he's ever been able to compete was in the mid to late 2000s when he had Iverson on his team and everyone hated that 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 matchup and they didn't mesh at all and that team went made it to the uh, Western Conference Finals. Long um, time ago. It wasn't isn't long he, time isn't ago. Isn't he similar to like Paul Pierce before Paul Pierce made a change in his game? Well, yeah. we can talk and, about and that. Mello never on KG. Mello never changed his game. Uh, well, Pierce kind here's of what I'll, I mean, if, we can have that discussion if you want. What I would say is that if not for KG, Paul, Paul Pierce man. never does a damn thing yeah. and we connect him well, to really, the wiggle when yeah. Antoine Walker because <laughs> oh, that's where he is. Yeah, he and he was never going to surface, and then after that, they lost 18 in a row the year before. He wanted out of town, and then they got KG, so he stayed. Oh, okay. If he went somewhere else, he never would have so gotten out of town. I can say literally thing. the same exact so thing. Thank so, God for uh, so Paul Pierce got KG. De the Denver Nuggets won 19 games the, in 2002 2003 season. They drafted Carmelo Anthony, and they won 42 games the next season. Until he blew the team up. Um, spin wheel. <laughs> That's a good spin. Oh. Man. Mike, what do you want to talk about? Land on your wow. name. Anything you okay. want. Well. I was hoping it was landing on me. I, no, had, I had a good one for you. To me, I, I'm just a, excited. We, we had a great, great wheelhouse jam on Friday night. I yes. thought it was awesome. Good wheelhouse. That was so much fun. Yes. I mean, we had, we had, uh, you know, Dylan was there, so he brought stuff to the table. Yeah. It went for about four hours before we got one out on that thing. <laughs> People still, you know, on the show, so but we can go a long time. The, the audience doesn't so, know. Dylan is me and Logan's third brother, and on Friday night, right. we were at a and we're hoping he gets here. He, we he's kind of our artistic director, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Dylan's a, our a graphic artistic designer. So, so anyways, I, I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm going to have a couple good jams this week because. Okay. It's, tomorrow is Jerry Garcia's 75th birthday, and it starts the days between. And the days between is seven days where all we do is Garcia for seven days. And it, it, it's very exciting, so yeah. I'm looking for more jams other than the wheelhouse jam. Yeah. Um, uh, I like the theme song for the show. I, I've got other things. That, you know what I'm calling Dion Williams's uh, dog? What? The Cherry Garcia Scoop. The, wow. That's great. Name. Uh, is that from the ice cream? Yes, I like it. I'm a huge fan. Kind of Which stunk? <laughs> It's the Cherry Garcia. Yes, it is. All right, that was enough. We nice. That it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to talk about that. No, that was perfect. Okay. Cavs. All right, the Cavs. So this is the dumpster fire that is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, just lots of sub subtweet LeBron versus Kyrie, who's clearly unpleasant right now. Uh, we know about the trade rumor and the trade request, but since then, a lot of things have developed. Since then, uh, Harrison Barnes had a wedding in Rhode Island, and oh. Steph Curry Have was. Have you seen this? No, it's, you need to watch this. Steph Curry is mocking LeBron's music video where he's like dancing and like working out and like doing his weird workouts. And he's making fun of him, and Kyrie is at the wedding, and Kyrie is laughing. Kyrie is like eating it up. He's making fun of LeBron with him. Egging him on. Oh yeah, he's he's rooting for it, and it, it just seems like I, I would bet a hundred dollars that Kyrie is not on. Well, that's more than you were gonna bet me on on Melinda Parentes. This yeah, is <laughs> this is this is a big bet. I just don't okay. think he's a part of the team, even though it makes sense for them to maybe keep him just in terms of like, hey, we have you under contract. I just don't I don't like the way it fits together. And I think when Kyrie leaves, I'm changing my MVP pick, MVP pick right now, not Kawhi. LeBron James is going to win MVP next year. He's going to be a ferocious I beast. I think he, LeBron deserves that respect. And I think what's changed with that team is I think Derek Rose is a, is a good ingredient on that squad. I know the injuries, I know, but he averaged 18 a game with the Knicks last year, and he had to play in that triangle, and he had Carmelo with him. I'd rather have LeBron with me than, and oh, he's going to come off the bench. He's going to be a sixth man. That team, not, but not, is not, he, not but one. is he? Well, I, why isn't he? Isn't he already on the team? What if Kyrie isn't there? What if they move Kyrie and they don't he's get a guard start. back? Yeah, he's well, start. yeah, that, that's a that's an if if if. Now, yeah. Ky Kyrie, I like him as a they're not team. moving Kyrie unless they get Porzingis or something. And how many teams can even trade for Kyrie? I think he's I got a feeling sense. Kyrie's there. Derrick Rose comes off the bench. Not one game in the playoffs last year did a Cavalier off the bench score ten points. 
That's a crazy fact. Crazy statistic. In so the playoffs? That, in the, probably in the championship series at least, not one player scored 10 points in that series off the bench. Yeah. I think Derrick Rose, I think he can be a good six man in that league, and I think he really contributes to that team, and he may be the factor that um, it takes them, all that talent they got doesn't drop down as much when you bring him in off the bench. Yeah, I think he's got something it's left. It's a very obvious clip. I think LeBron will definitely up D. Rose's game. There is always a super competitive, uh, when the Bulls are good and D. Rose is MVP, D. Rose and LeBron went at it. And they like brought each other up. They they had a multiple series in the playoffs where it that was, was the best I've ever great. seen D. Rose play. Yeah, D. Series. Rose was insane. Uh, I think he hit some baloney. All I can remember is that backboard shot yeah. for the win. But that I mean, he played amazing. Yeah. He, and if and if you pair him with somebody like LeBron, it's like obviously it's not the same thing as pairing somebody with like KG mentality. But LeBron's gonna get the best out of Der Derrick Rose. He's he is. So what are the roots of Kyrie and LeBron's? Feud, spat, whatever you want to call it. What is that nonsense? It's, Ky it's Kyrie's ego. Kyrie's ego. That's what it is. Kyrie's Ky ego. Ky Kyrie, Kyrie is a top 20 player in the NBA. You can say top 15, maybe. He's a uh, top five scorer in the league, but he thinks he's a top five player. And he thinks that he's an elite player. And he thinks that if he has his own reins, that he thinks he's going to be a championship contender. And he, he has the mentality that his brand is his how good of a player he is. And he isn't because he is this just gargantuan just being in terms of his brand. His, he, has, he has the highest selling shoe. His jersey is always in the top three or four. He's very popular with millennials. He's one of the most famous players, but it doesn't parallel his game. That's what I was going to say. Kyrie has that millennial attitude when he looks at his NBA 2K rating. Yes. And he sees that it's a I 90. It. I he sees it. A, it was a 91 overall. He's a 91. He was pissed. And, he's and he, he was legitimately upset. And I think that really affects his psyche, not only with the, the NBA 2K rating, but how he compares himself with the rest of the league. Yeah. And he thinks that he's, if he's not a top five player in everyone else's mind, regardless of what he thinks, then he's not a success in the NBA. I disagree. And, and I, what I think is he's 26 years old. I think he's got a lot left. And I think once you put the ball back in his hands, and he's a point guard, and he doesn't have LeBron running this team and coaching the team right in front of him, that you're going to see a lot more out of Kyrie. And I would ask you the question, who's a better fit, Isaiah Thomas or Kyrie? Well, Isaiah Thomas is better than Kyrie, I, I think, overall. Marginally, I, I, if I, that, I, and it's I, I debatable. Think, but I wouldn't be surprised if next season if Kyrie was way better. But, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm taking it as a, in terms of last season alone, Isaiah Thomas was better. And he had, a, he had a greater impact in the game. He's and a better it, leader. Yeah, his, his ability to lead a team. I don't think uh, Isaiah cast. Thomas is a leader. I love Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah I want to win a championship, but I don't think he's a leader. What do you mean? He's single-handedly. No, he's thrown people on the bus. Games. He's talked behind his team. He's had trouble during so timeouts. He's had times after the game where he's questioned Steven's substitution policy because he wasn't in the game. You remember that. How can you no. be upset about no. being a player being upset about not getting in the game? He, I want to no, be no, no, he A leader question. doesn't no, vocalize no, that. A, no, a leader no, doesn't no, no, vocalize he that. He, he's a follower. He, and he's so good. you're saying questioning is him saying, oh, I would honestly, I, obviously I want to be in the game. I want to be in the game. He was saying that. He wasn't, oh, what the heck is Brad doing? That's what he's doing. He trusts Brad. He loves Brad. What do you mean? It doesn't cast the, a good light on the chemistry of the team to see the leader of the team talking like that. It, it's very self-centered, and it's not. He should be. Oh, I you think can I brush it off if you want. I agree with what, what you, you guys want. say. I love Isaiah Thomas, it's and a, I want to win a championship with him. A, but he is not the leader on that team. I wouldn't do that. Trade and that I've told you before about. that if they had that chance, if they had that dream point guard on that team, it would not be. Isaiah Thomas. It's yeah, but I, I would rather have Isaiah than trade Isaiah J and a pick for Kyrie. Like I would never but want suppose to do that it was Isaiah pick. and a pick. I mean, if it's not the Brooklyn pick, and if it's not, uh, and I do want to win the I championship. I would with give Isaiah. like I would give our own. I'm just throwing pick that out. And there's not many teams yeah. that could um, uh, could even try to take Kyrie. Right, right, right. They're one of them. Okay, the banana boat. So we, this has been on the wheel a couple times, but we just never talked about it. I just want to. I think we can be pretty quick with it. I the, all four of these guys. Melo, although he wasn't on the banana boat, he was taking the picture. D Wade, <laughs> CP3, and LeBron. All four of these guys are going to be up for uh, free agency next year. Uh, Chris Paul, we saw him finagle his own way to really choose his contract that he's going to have. We know what the deal with the other thing is. I, I want to know what you guys, what your perspective is on where you think that they could possibly land. If you see them joining forces, what do you think about the potential just imminence of the banana boat striking the NBA? What you got, Ray? I have no idea. Really? I have, I have no clue if they will be able to find their way in the same team. I kind of want to see it happen. No, oh, yeah, I do. definitely. Um, not for, the, not for you know, good basketball reasons, but uh, I don't know. I feel like LeBron James is a paradigm shifter. That's what he put in his high school yearbook. Um, <laughs> and that will be another way that he could, he could add to his legacy. 
and again change the landscape the landscape of the NBA. Yeah, I agree with so that. So how isn't it more likely that it could happen in Cleveland now if Kyrie gets mm. out? Isn't it a more possibility that Yeah, I I wonder how much like these like how much does Melo care about going to like a crappy place? Like I, I feel like he doesn't want he to wants do that. To be in like, LA or yeah, New York yeah, or yeah. I I, mean, I could see them going to San Antonio. That's him what, a lot. That, I'll yeah. tell you why it's never going to happen. Tell me. LeBron is going to bag those guys because they are getting older every day. LeBron still got it. He doesn't need those guys for a championship. And friendship is not going to overcome his need to fulfill his legacy by going to San Antonio or the Lakers or wherever he sees the best fit for yeah, him but, to win a championship. But, it is not with aging superstars getting older every day, and it'll be a year and a half before they even play. Plug Carmelo D. Wade in a year and a half from now. There's well, nothing that's left. What, that's what the argument is, is that he's going to go into these teams where there's going to be minimal pieces, and then you add those as well, and he will be a championship contender. No matter where he goes and what his supporting cast is, he's going to be a championship contender, and these players are good enough already. It's not like we're paying all four of these guys max offer sheets. LeBron's going to be getting a max contract. Chris Paul's going to be getting the second pay, pay, the second most close to a max contract. D. Wade, is, D. Wade and Melo are both going to have that to That idea is four out. years old. No, it's not. It it's, is. It's, it absolutely it's, 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 it's is. They're past it. Every They're past time. it. No, I, I only, I never thought it was possible in, in earlier in their primes because because of the things that you're saying, because of the way that the play styles don't work together, but because of how they're. Older I didn't say anything about playing styles. LeBron. Well, you've talked I about said it before. aging superstars, and okay. LeBron is not going to. He's not going to go with age. He it's needs Kawhi Leonard. Needs That's what I'm saying. Why could they not? Lay? Okay, so they Clint, all go to San Antonio. Yes, that's an example. Okay, if they, if, if, they, if they ship off Aldridge and they uh, just like well, renounce the rights of certain other players that are taking up some big contracts, they would have to. They would have to ship off Patty Mills. They'd have to ship off Paul Gasol. And if they, the only other contract that they had that was a large contract on the roster was Kawhi Leonard, they could sign LeBron to a max offer sheet. They could sign. Uh, uh, CP3 to max offer sheet, and then the other two guys would have to take huge pay cuts, but theoretically it could happen. Like, that's that's a place where it could happen, and that is a, such an awesome team. If, that, if that's your five... We thought and Wade, game, Kamala, and C. Paul is an awesome team. But take they're, them they're, out they're, they're, they're the third, fourth, I, fifth I, best player in the team. I, Melo's the fifth best know. player in the team. That's not bad. If Melo's a... No, yeah, it is bad. What? <laughs> Kind of, there's, would, there's, there isn't a team in the league where you no. wouldn't be the best player, the uh, best fifth best player on the team. You got, I just don't get it on on, on Carmelo. You and just hate him <laughs> too much. You hate him too much. I think he's proven how bad he is. I mean, the ball sticks in his hands. It Steve sticks in Steve Paul's hands. He blew up the triangle. He blew. I mean, I know Phil Jackson for was good awful. reason. The triangle needed to be blown yeah, up. But it's never going to work if he doesn't even try it. He told Porzingis to top, stop talking about the triangle. He got these Porzingis. are good things. These are good things. They're like complimenting him. They're not good things. To stop talking about the triangle. Not the to try player. To the triangle. What? Did you watch? Do you like him in the Olympics? Oh, that's that's his real claim to fame. That's what he says makes him great. He won a gold medal. Go oh, great, won Kamala. Gold that's, yeah, oh, yeah, he's the greatest Olympic player <laughs> in the United States okay, history. So, that's Carmelo. So, so well, it's great. not even that. It's the score. You wouldn't yeah. even like that more. It's the score. He's the best scorer. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just like that play style. This is either way overblown or way underrated. Um, you're all, only on one side of the spectrum. Olympic mellow is just this kind of like really otherworldly kind the of one thing team, that no one, one really knows whether it's going to come together or not. But if you do see in situations where he is not one of the best players on the floor and he is just like an off-ball okay. scorer in quick stints, he's incredible. I'll give when you he can the be a one spot place. shooter, he's incredible. The one place he can go where Carmelo will survive and play well, Cleveland right now. He'll survive because he's got LeBron there right now. If he went to Cleveland and they found a way of trading Kyrie out of that or whatever it is well, and getting Carmelo, I think that might work. That's what I think is going – my prediction earlier, I made it earlier, uh, I forget it was the last episode or the one before. Because I'd like to see Carmelo at least be good again. Yeah, no, I agree. I love time. when he's good. But the prediction I made it before was a three-team deal that's going to land them like Eric Bledsoe or a different point guard and Melo. That's what I think is going to happen. Think about that. If they could get Josh Jackson somehow too with Eric Bledsoe and Carmelo. I Cleveland's think, right back you there. You can I mean, debate that their yeah. team would be better than they are I think right much now. better, yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to do one more wheel, and then we'll move to the hats and the cards. Okay. Okay, we were... Uh, Zion. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay, Zion and Lomelo. So these two guys, Zion Williamson, Lomelo Ball, highlight sensations, AAU superstars. When I was talking to you, I was actually mistaken. Uh, Lomelo is actually going into his uh, sophomore year. So Zion's That's right. Yeah, so Zion's going into his senior year. That's he's going right. to be in a draft class. His draft class is incredible. So you ready for this? So Marvin Bagley isn't really that well known, but he's the best player in that in that class, and he's going to be really good. But then you got Zion, and then you got the Diesel, Baby Diesel's kid, Sharif O'Neal, Shaq's kid, and then you got Manute Bull's kid, Bull Bull. And though that's who's in this draft class, and it's just hilarious. And Zion is just, I say that he's the most expo explosive high school player that I've seen since Derrick Rose. 
and I think that he is really phenomenal. I want to know you got how, how you guys think about the AU system in terms of how translatable a superstar in this kind of like the stage that they're in and like how it's being showcased the way it is in, in this generation. I just want to know what your perspective is on it. I think there's a little lost in the AAU because it's so offensively geared. Like, who's the guy at a Duke that was a disappointment that drafted in the teams or whatever? Who's that? In the, uh, Giles? Yeah. Like, okay, he was, he was amazing. Was okay, AAU but that's, was like, he's the number one pick okay, when he goes into yeah. college. And he's, he's no, he not good enough. But he was so struck, stricken with injuries. It's like, that's not necessarily his fault. But it's I do agree. Like, when Shabazz Muhammad was in, in AAU, he was like, he blew the minds off of everyone. Right. I'm just videos. hoping that that's not what Zion. When I see Zion, I see like a LeBron type athlete, and I'm just like blown away. And I like hope, I hope he can continue that with the, every step he makes in the uh, college and NBA. I just, I'm worried. And out of all those like four guys, Bull Bull is my favorite guy by far. His name is Bull Bull. That's awesome. fantastic. <laughs> but he's, he's Kevin Durant. Like he shoots, he yeah. plays like guard, he dribbles, he, he pulls up. He, he he has a kind of like a weird release, but he's seven foot. He can shoot it from his shoulder. He's got like a seven five wingspan. Yeah, too. he's crazy. So um, uh, when when I was coaching, um, uh, we played the men's team played Bridgeport, and that Manute was on the Bridgeport team. It was yeah. the first time we ever seen him. He could lay down the lane and touch both sides. And <laughs> the, we're in, we're in, a, we're in a, a bus waiting for it. Then the game he comes out and it's a Volkswagen Rabbit. And Manute Ball is going to get in the Volkswagen Rabbit, and you go, what the hell? And he's driving. And what it is? No front seat. Wow! He's driving for the back. True story. That's incredible. Uh, what, what do you think about Zion and Lamelo? I think I think uh, I'm worried about some of the habits. I think hopefully they'll be broken in, in college. But if you look at the highlight tapes and with Zion, um, all you see defensively is his blocks, and those are blocking on kids that are going for for layups. Or and like help defense, or yeah. yeah. And he's jumping you know, 100 feet in the air, and he's blocking the ball down yeah, back to earth, and it's like. And it's what, it's what everybody wants to see, and that's what's exciting. But unfortunately, again, we don't see anything defensively. Yeah. It's, it's tough to see how translatable it is. That's, that's why athleticism jumps off the paper the most, right. because that is what is most translatable. But in terms of just, like, fundamentals, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. If it'll the translate. body type's really interesting. I was trying to think who was it. You know who, I know it's a, a crossover for you, but you guys. But this Raphael Devers, Devers you've seen him with the Red Sox, you guys? Yeah. Yep. He's got the same body type. And the guys, the guys that have got that body type but are still really athletic. Yeah. The only one that could really come up with was Adrian Dantley. That's kind of what I'm um, yep. like a six seven Adrian Dantley, and I, I couldn't really. I don't want to say the word of the jail boys, or because I'm um, obviously he, with the left hand and everything. But you got to hope, you know. Oh, I, he's reformed. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. All right, <laughs> so we're gonna move okay. on from the wheel. We're gonna do hats first, and then we're gonna do cards. So today I got some new hats, and Logan is going to be the hat guesser. Oh, am so I not supposed to see? You're, no, you, you can, can see. see him. It's okay. okay. So we're gonna amend the rules a little bit. Everyone agrees or has thought and talked about that ha using player names at all is just too easy. So player names are off the table. You can't use any player's names from present or past or anything. So whenever you're ready, Logan can close your eyes. Matt, you can pick, uh, Mike, you can pick a hat and throw it on his head. All right, you got a clue? Wasp. Hornet. <laughs> Wasp. Good synonym. Win. You got one point. Well, eyes closed. Another one. Uh, you can go. Gucci. Oh, that's a good, good hint. Gucci? Gucci Mane. <laughs> I don't know where, what his connection is. Outcast. Uh, Atlanta. I win. Ooh, very well. You gotta know your audience. You gotta know your audience. Right, is Mike. Gucci from him? Yes. I'm, There's lots of rappers yeah. from Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking cool now. I got it tilted. <laughs> what you got? What you got? You're up, Mike. Oh, pterodactyl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Raptors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah, I agree. I closed. We got two more. I guess he sees. So, like by process of elimination, he probably knows what the, knows the last. Good uh, Washington. No, that was a good, not a bad guess though. Yeah. Um, Bean. 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 I, uh, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I closed. I guess he probably shouldn't have looked at the hats. He probably knows what it is. Here we go. Oh, uh, Riverwalk. Mm, Riverwalk? I was going to say oh, that. Were you actually you were going to say Riverwalk? I was going to say Riverwalk. You ever been there? It's beautiful. Oh, is that like the, the, the boat? <laughs> There's like that funny boat. <laughs> Banana boat. That's <laughs> Riverwalk. <laughs> San Antonio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. That, that's all. Yeah, I remember <laughs> watching the Spurs and like Imagine the Banana boat played out of Riverwalk. Have you been there? You've been there? I have. It's beautiful. Oh, it's awesome. I hear the music's great. Yeah. All right. So. 
Ray, sorry, your first time on the show, you didn't get a, get a, get a hat. That's fine. Mike was victorious. Congratulations, Mike. So we're moving on. Mike and Ray are new to cards. I got, I added some cards. Here, you got to pick a coach first. Pick a coach. Pick a you, coach. Think, you think Mike can get Do I keep it? Deladova yeah, at you, six you, man? You can tell everyone. Tell, tell well, it's probably what enough for six man. What do you got? What do you got? We can look at well, it? Yeah, yeah, tell, yeah, tell it. You I, got, I got one of the great coaches of all time, Larry Brown. Yeah. Thanks for Larry Brown. You're welcome. That's awesome. I got Phil Jackson. We got some stacked coaches. I got Chuck on Daly. Side. I got Chuck Daly. He's good. Ooh. I got Mike Dunleavy, so I easily have the worst coach. <laughs> um, that's too bad. So what we're going to do yeah. is we played this last Larry week. Mike was not here. Ray was not here. I'm going to deal you seven or eight cards or so. And you got to choose your starting five. And it's Larry Bur Brown on the Spurs. Yeah, that's, that's like that's uh, that's a big throwback. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you understand how to play? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to pick a starting team. I'm giving you seven cards. You got to pick your starting five, your best starting five, and then we're gonna argue why I think that my starting five is gonna be better than your starting five. I think I might have the got, worst team. Mike got Carmelo. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> That was not gonna be your pick best that player. That was easy. Yeah. I take him. <laughs> no, no, that was easy. Off. <laughs> All right, pick him out. Pick him out. So I, my starting lineup is going to be Baron Davis at the one. I oh. got oh, Steve Kerr at the two. I got from the Jesus. I got Phil Jackson as a player, big rebounder at the three. I got Sean Kemp at the four, and then I got Carl Malone, the mailman, at the five. What you got? What do you guys got? Okay, my team is not going to win, but they're going to be fun. <laughs> I got the shortest team ever made. I got Muggsy Bogues, Isaiah Thomas, Danny Ainge, Stanley Johnson, and Kurt Rambis. <laughs> That's so short. So everybody's That's short, so short, and then there's this Kurt Rambis. Muggsy, I see So Danny I don't think I'm going to win any games because <laughs> if I have to guard a shooting guard or a small forward, I'm in trouble. You're going to have heart. You're going to have heart. I'm going to war with mine. You're going to I war? Mean, oh, absolutely. Larry okay. Brown coaching, um, uh, oh, man, coaching Kenny Smith and um, uh, um, uh, Bradley Beal at the one and the two okay. with Gordon Haywood okay. and Stacey Ogman. Oh, Stacey and Ogman. Bill, and Bill Cartwright at center. Okay. We can do a lot with that okay. team. Have you seen? And I don't need Carmelo. I think it might be Bill Cartwright's <laughs> birthday. I'm pretty sure. I was looking down the field. I was talking to Ray about this earlier, and he has the weirdest shot mechanics ever. I he never does. realized. I, I didn't, it's Fairly pissed. accurate. Like, it's very funky. Fairly accurate. What do you got over there? I'm not sold on my team, um, <laughs> but I do love our, our size, our, not our athleticism, Larry. but at least our grits. Yeah. We have Marcus Morris, <laughs> okay. Larry Bird, Larry Legend, yep. Yep. Uh, Vlad Divac, to to dead shows. Robert Parrish, and Sam Bowie. Ooh, tough pick. Ooh, poor Sam. All right, Logan has the worst team. You picked the winner. Who I'm wins? definitely out. I think uh, Shay's team probably. No! I got the mailman and Sean Cap. Yeah, right. Look who he's got. He's got Mike Dunleavy. Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. He's got Phil Jackson that can coach on the team. Yeah, I got a player coach. Player coach. I want that match. All right, all right. I got, we got one more. Uh, same thing? Well, same you exact thing. Same more. coach. Yeah, keep your coach. Oh. Keep your coach. Those this are, guy. Okay. Yeah, these are for you, and these oh. are for me. Okay. Okay, I got okay here we here. go. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is very similar to oh. what happened last time. Oh, I'm liking my team again. Okay, I, <laughs> oh can, I can compete. I might have the short team again, though. <laughs> I have a huge... I I'm going all guards. Okay, so I, got, I have a very similar team to what I had in the last round last time. I have Gary Payton. I got Cedric Maxwell at the two, even though he's not really two, but whatever. I got LeBron not James. Two. It's okay. I got LeBron James, I got Hakeem, and then I got Marcus Camby clogging up the paint. You're not scoring on my team. My team is I locked like down. Locked down defense. You know, he made $130 million. I watched 30 for 30 last night. Did you? Made $130 million, Marcus Camby. Good for him. UMass, wow. represent. That's what you true? got? Oh, oh, I got a good team. <laughs> I, got, I really do. I got Joe Dumars, and I got a Lou Williams at the, at the guard. Will. All right? I like that. That's it's good not too bad. Nice I got David Robinson at center. Nice. With Dirk at one forward and Charles Barkley at the other. I like Game that team. Over. I don't I like know. My team. team's better than no you. You guys got stacked teams. I got screwed over again. Too bad. <laughs> I got, I just have five guards. <laughs> I have five guards. I got Mike Bibby, Nick Van Exel, <laughs> Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, and there was one other card, and I don't even know where he went. That's my the team worst. is not you're playing. Out, I have the opposite problem. I got Demarcus, Anthony Davis, uh, Dominique Wilkins, Chris Mullen, Larry Johnson, Sky Pippen. Wow. And that was six because I have a six-man Demarcus coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, think I, I think because of you, you can't have anybody that brings the ball up. The Sky Pippen? I have the most diverse and dominant team. I, yeah. I, you don't I know. I'm, I'm with Uncle Mike. Logan is the worst team again. You can choose again, Logan. I, I like that front court. Uncle yeah, Mike. I mean, it would be, be between these two teams. I think you got to give it with uh, you got LeBron, Elijah, and you can't, you can't. Gary Payton's gonna lock down Dumars and those. Well, 
Yeah, I would take. Up. I would take. So Shea Chris Moe, I, 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 domination. Are we gonna do jerseys? No. No, we can't do jerseys. We'll do jerseys oh. next time. I okay, really want to talk really about Shea because I, right I wore my. Okay. You have a jersey. Wow, he wore his favorite jersey. He has his favorite jersey on. Yeah, but I. I don't even know what it is. That's a great jersey. That was a 2000. 2000. We had the worst jerseys last year. That stripe that came down that connected the short. All right. That's all the time we have today. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much for joining my wheelhouse. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's really great. That